So why couldn't the Italian open the door? Because he had gnocchi. Jokes aside, gnocchi is definitely one of the more underrated and less common pasta dishes. Despite this, it offers a slightly different eating experience with it being a bit more chewy as compared to regular noodles, such as spaghetti, fettuccine, linguine, you know the lot. That being said, it is a great way to use leftover potatoes or potatoes in general. So in today's video, we make gnocchi. Begin by acquiring the right kind of potatoes. While you can use a waxy potato if that's all you have, I find that using a starcher variety such as a russet gets the job done a lot quicker. The first step is to cook your potatoes. You can bake them in an oven and scoop out the insides while keeping the skins for cheddar bacon potato skins. But in the essence of time and mostly because I was lazy, I chose to drown the potatoes in some salted hydrogen dioxide. Boil your potatoes for about 30 to 40 minutes or until forking tender. And by that, I mean until a fork can easily pierce the flesh of your little starchy boys. Once that's done, remove them from the water and peel them. You can use whichever method you like, such as a peeler or your hands, but I find that dunking them in ice water helps the skin come off a lot easier. Transfer the flesh into a bowl and begin mashing away. This will be easier while the taters are still warm, so don't take too long. Oh, and if you have a ricer, you'll have a much easier time. Once you've mashed your potatoes to the best of your ability, toss in your flour and an egg. Give it a little mix and once it starts coming together, begin kneading it with your hands until it forms a nice smooth ball. The amount of flour in the description is just a rough approximation and you'll need to add a little bit more if your dough is too sticky. You can take this time to feel for any lumps left over due to your lack of mashing ability and smash or remove them. Now that you've acquired a fairly smooth voluptuous lump, cut it into as many quarters as you can and begin rolling them into cylinders. As for how thick they should be, I'll leave that up to you. If you're someone who enjoys thicker but fewer pieces of gnocchi, then you can opt for a slightly thicker roll. If not, then just roll it thinner. Next, using a bench scraper or knife or any other sharp object, cut your little potato parcels and you are pretty much done. For those of you who want extra credit, you can go a step further and give it a slight pattern. Why would you want to give it a pattern? Simple, it looks better and gives it more surface area for sauces to cling to. You can just roll it on a fork like this or press the fork into it. The same can be done with anything with a similar pattern. I found this in my kitchen drawer which probably isn't meant for making gnocchi but it got the job done. If you're not eating it immediately, then just dust the tray with some flour and place your gnocchis on it, making sure they practice social distancing. Place them in the freezer uncovered until completely frozen before transferring into a container or ziplock bag and placing it back into the freezer. If you're eating it right now, then just toss them into some salted boiling water until they float and eat it with whatever sauce you like. I find that brown butter with sage goes really well with it and is super easy to make. All you have to do is to toss some butter into a pan and heat it until it smells like roasted nuts and starts to brown. Toss in a few sage leaves and fry it off for about 30 seconds. Finally, toss in your gnocchi and let them fry off until they become nice and golden on both sides. Even if you're not serving it with brown butter, I recommend frying off your gnocchis for extra texture and flavour. Finally, grab or borrow your fanciest plate you have and plate your gnocchis. Finish it off with some freshly cracked black pepper, a few knobs of blue cheese, some freshly grated parmigiano reggiano, some shards of the same cheese, and maybe a squeeze of lemon if you so desire. Proceed to consume at your own pace and enjoy the dish. And there you have it, how to make gnocchi. As with any other pasta, this goes with so many other sauces, so choose your favourites and go to town with it. That being said, I will recommend a sauce that's a bit more liquid with fewer bits and pieces in it. The reason being, if you're using a sauce with lots of bits and pieces in it, then you're better off using a pasta with a hollow centre, such as macaroni, frigatoni or even penne. Different pasta shapes have different purposes, but that's for another video. But that's all for today. 
If you enjoyed the video or learned something new, remember to like and subscribe and to share the video. Also, let me know in the comments down below what other dishes you like to see, what other recipes you like to learn, or what other products you like me to review. But for now, I'll say thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video.